Hello everybody and you are very welcome to this episode of Successful Perspectives. Successful Perspectives is when we deep dive into the topic of leadership and we get to know one of the leaders in our very selective network, Boardroom by Amir. On this occasion, I am delighted to be joined by my friend Murtaza Khan, who is the managing partner for Middle East and Africa at Fragament. <music> Murtaza, always great to see you. You're very welcome to Successful Perspectives. It's great to be here, Trevor. Thanks a lot for hosting. No, my pleasure. So maybe we'll start off with a little bit of context. Give me the beats as you see it, the most important beats of your career, and tell us where you are now, your managing partner with, with Fragomen and what that means to you. Well, really quickly, Fragomen is a, is a global immigration firm. We're the largest uh, network of uh, immigration providers around the world. We've been around for more than 50 years in over 50 locations around the world. Uh, but you know how, how I ended up uh, in, in the world of immigration, well, I always say, you, you kind of land in the, in the in the field of immigration. You don't like plan as a kid growing up that oh I'm going to be an immigration professional. Uh, so so that's how my journey is. I was uh, you know, originally I, I, I trained with a, a big four accounting firm uh, as a chartered accountant and worked in corporate finance advisory. And then the opportunity came up really to come out to the Middle East, explore for a couple of years. And there you go. I landed in the field of uh, immigration and uh, in Dubai and, and never really looked back uh, from there. How many years ago was that? Because I hear this so often. Everybody is, oh, I was planning to stay two years in Dubai and then X amount of years. What about you? Yeah, it's uh, 16 and a half years. <laughs> <laughs> I think who has the who has the record is Colin McLaughlin, the, the CEO of Dubai Duty Free. Um, he, I remember him telling me he planned to come out two years for two years. And honestly, I think it's like 40 years ago or something. It's, he's, so he, he, he wins that record. Give me a sense of, I've had the pleasure of getting to know you in, in recent years. And I see I have, I'm in a very privileged position where I have access to all of these leaders. And I'm always curious about how do they look at leadership? So. Give me a sense of the main tenets of your leadership philosophy and how you approach it. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of literature and, and you know discussion about this topic, but for me, you know, the, the core the core principles really are around that authenticity, that integrity, and, and being able to you know really build trust with, with, with people. Um, these these are the key pillars. People should know that you stand for these. Uh, um, and, and we specifically, we're a people business. We're working with people, uh, and, and it has to be both ways. So, so the connection you form uh, is, is is the foundation, um, and, and where you genuinely trust each other and, and have the space to be open. And that's where it all starts. For me. It's fascinating because uh, I had a chat with the CEO of the She community, Astrid, uh, yesterday for a successful perspective. And she mentioned two of the same values of, of you, authenticity and trust. In terms of building teams and your experience of doing this over the years, what, what does trust mean to you in, in that context? Well, look, as I said, it's both ways. And and you, as an individual, as a leader, have to be accountable uh, to yourself for what you say, for what you promise, and, and ensure that you deliver. Um, you know, and, and it's an ongoing process, always. I, I don't see it that there's a gold standard and you reach a particular kind of milestone and say, oh, I've been successful. It's, it's, it's a journey, it's continuous. Uh, yes, you know, as part of that, you look at outcomes, measurable things like KPIs and targets, and, and all of those things are formed in part of what we do. Uh, but but really, you know, the the, the um, it's, it's it's about consistently reflecting on on on, on, on those kind of core tenets uh, and, and making sure that you know those foundations uh, are, are are always holding and are are, are always strong. And I like that concept of, you know, it's an ongoing process that there is no finish line type of mentality. Do you have time? Do you find time to think about and reflect on your philosophy of leadership? 
uh, not always, uh, not as much as I'd like to, uh, but uh, um, you know, you engage when you're engaging with your team and engaging with people, you're kind of forced to, you know, always make sure that 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 is the case, right? Uh, so so you find those moments to, to to be able to do that, or you know, sometimes things are not never perfect. It's not a hunky dory world, right? So you you do deal with challenges and, and in addressing those, you always go back to, well, what are your core principles? What do you stand for? And, and then that's how you approach uh, the issue. Yeah. And and so it, it sounds to me, based on our, our conversation here, you've a very clear structure in terms of your leadership philosophy. But would you consider yourself a natural leader, right? If I was talking to Murtaza 20 years ago, or, or even you know younger when you were a, a young kid, say, would you have would you have foreseen that you'd end up as as managing partner over this big region? Is that something that was a natural inclination, or something that you it was something that you had to work on yourself, which you alluded to earlier as well? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, look, some people are born leaders; others learn as they grow. Uh, if I, if I if I truly reflect, I've probably learned more a lot over my career. Um, and on the journey, I've had some great help in the form of managers, family, mentors. Um, and, you know, over time, I've also kind of learned to let go a little bit, right? In the sense that, you know, I've, I've recognized that I must adapt myself to be more natural. Um, and, and as I said, there's no gold standard that, that, that you reach, per se, right? Uh, as a leader, what you've, what you've got to have is the humility to know that one always needs to be learning and, and, and growing. Uh, in, in, in all respects. And this is, to be honest, I, I do a lot of these conversations, as you know, and, and this is the answer that I always like to hear because when you read the literature, you read particularly some of the commercially successful books on leadership, this is what they refer to as the essence of leadership, right? It, it's the leader that isn't the one that's not, you know, naturally leaning into the spotlight or has what unfortunately we we associate or characterize as leadership traits when often they're they're not it's the leader that has the humility to recognize no i need to keep working on myself how can i be better it's that self-awareness which is is very important and, and this is particularly important given that the whole narrative around leadership you know in recent decades has been evolving quite a lot you know, you have a responsibility, you know, for the organization to be sustainable financially so that you can continue to grow and hire more people and help more clients. You have a responsibility now to create a positive work culture, you know, for all of the team. And now increasingly there is a, a responsibility in terms of leaders also focusing on the, the ESG side of things and social impact, etc. What's your take on that and how are you seeing things evolve? And what have you taken away from that, that evolution yourself? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think it's, it's not only now that it's, it's always been the responsibility of great leaders. If you look back, even in history, great leaders have always, always taken a broader uh, perspective on, on whether it's creating you know, positivity uh, in the organizations or um, in the society that they, that, they, that they represent, or in, in the case of politics, you know, whole nation, right? Uh, so, you know, you've got to uh, recognize that, that, that it's, it's always been important, but particularly now, I, I believe, you know, we're going through a time of incredible change. We've talked about that change on, on some of the roundtables we've had, right, uh, in, in the recent past. Uh, and whether it's to do with climate change, new technology, gender equity, diversity in, 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 in general. Uh, so we must, you know, always as leaders, you know, always see that no matter how big or small our responsibility, our region, our organization, we have a part to play in, in, in shaping some of that, right? In whatever space we are. And, and that that I do strongly believe we need to be connected to, to, to not only actually do our uh, job as leaders, but, but actually to remain relevant in, in this kind of dynamic environment. Yeah, everybody has a role to play and everybody can have an impact in all, in all shapes and all ways. Final question for this part of the conversation, Murtaza. 
you, you mentioned the first question was around how you've had the, the benefit and the value of, of experience in, in different industries and different sectors before landing into the world that you operate so well in now. But what has been the best piece of career advice or learning or value that you picked up along the way, um, you know, up until this point in time? Uh, yeah, so uh, look, as I said, there's been a lot and, and you know, it's, it's hard. There's no silver bullet per se, you know, in, in anything in life, right? Uh, you know, like obviously the basics to, to, to make sure that you aim high you work hard with genuine commitment and belief in, in, in what you do and, and importantly enjoy what you do right um but but always keep perspective um as well right i, I like this particular saying that comes back to me it's, it's just stuck with me since childhood uh, i guess you know to to effectively have the courage to change the things you can accept the things that you can't and and the wisdom to know the difference right uh, it, it helps build that perspective in, in, in terms of everything we do. I, I love this. I was reading this morning, right? So I go for my run and then I sit in a park and I read a little page of, uh, I was actually reading Epictetus, this philosopher. And it, it touches on that very eloquent saying you have there, but it was something along the lines of what he was getting across was, don't wish that things had turned out differently. Actually, be glad and be grateful for exactly how they're turning out. So in other words, you have this perception of you wanting things to go a certain way. And then when they don't, we have this perceived idea that that's a negative. And instead, we should look at it as be grateful that it's going exactly the way it is supposed to go. In other words, a challenge is coming your way and that's forcing you to be creative. It's forcing you to try and overcome this. It, it's in sync with, with, with your thinking, which I really like. That was excellent, Murtaza. Thanks so much for that. It was great to have you on Successful Perspectives. Thanks for sharing your insights. Thanks for sharing some of your career advice. It's really appreciated. Thanks a lot, Trevor. And, and I hope you do the top gear leaderboard on this.